Well, not an argument, but a conversation. And, and it, it's a good conversation with somebody. And the person was saying that love is an emotion. Oh, I, I fell in love with you. I, I feel that I couldn't help myself. And the other argument is that, but that the love is a choice, that it's a conscious decision that you make, you know. Mm. In, in your opinion, with, and with your Christian background, which is it? Because I feel that that can be linked to this whole sex issue. As no one, my body will not have, as opposed to a choice to make the little steps before you get there. So for the person, the person listening, I'm not sure the person listening, but which side of the camp do you fall into? So give those two points again. Love and emotion or love a choice, a, a, a decision that you make? I would say I'm in the camp of decision. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. I think there's an element of both of mm -hmm. them, you know, but I think that the, yeah. the stronger, the stronger um, part of it that will make it, mm -hmm. that, will, that will define the definition of love is a decision mm -hmm. because it may start as, a, as an emotion yeah. where you know you feel the butterflies you you know you feel the sparks but after a while it becomes a decision you make a decision yeah. i make a decision to love this person you know um in the good times and the bad times you know when things are not going i've chosen to love you and i've been intentional about mm -hmm. that choice mm -hmm. yeah uh, i i i think it's it's a mix, mm -hmm. but more of a decision. Mm -hmm. I think the, the the more the emotion and less the decision, that's lost, mm -hmm. right? And that's why emotions, you know, lost, you you go to do what sometimes you don't even want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. When the emotional part is over mm -hmm. and blown, right, but when, and so that's why little of, the, of, of, of both, because there is, some part of emotions in it as well. But the, the decision part, as well as the life of a believer, a Christian, mm -hmm. should outweigh the emotional part. Mm -hmm. So that's where I look at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. let me, you got to add something. No, no, no. I'm like, yeah, I, I couldn't add anything more. <laughs> Thanks for that. Too. What words of wisdom would you have for young couples and older ones? Um, as we're all learning about the role of sex in a Christian marriage. You know, uh, we had some people on here a couple of weeks ago, and they were saying that even the premarital counseling that they had on a Christian perspective really didn't prepare them for a lot of what they uh, what they experienced. So, mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. what a what do have advice for younger couples, and even older ones, and the role of of sex, of sex in a Christian marriage? Yeah, uh, the, the role of sex is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Very important. And they are un unfortunately, based on just shying away from it in the Christian community or environment, has left a lot of damage. Yeah. God has put something there for you to enjoy. Mm. And it's not an evil thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. And it's difficult for people to have that perspective. And so I, it, one thing, I, that first, that background, secondly, the openness to it, if it's a good yeah. thing, it's not something you should be shy from discussing. And mm -hmm. the older ones to discuss even to details to the younger ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, somebody came to meet me as a doctor at a young age. person was even older than me and said after getting married, the first night or two, he had to ask me, look, how do they actually have sex? I was asking about the real woman organs and where the rest that mm. didn't know I was mm. and, mm. and I was doctor. And it was shocking to me. Now, so sex <laughs> We discuss, and I do have some issues that I always try to encourage. I have some, you know, some kind of fun. first. There's really no barrier, mm -hmm. and there's no limit to any action you want to do during sex. Mm -hmm. Only two rules there: one, there must be mutual understanding. Yeah. 
So yeah, understanding and agreement. So if the other person doesn't flow well with this discourse, and let there be an agreement mm -hmm. to know there's nothing evil in this. Mm -hmm. Because there are different styles, different everything is permitted. Mm -hmm. As long as you both agree, and secondly, as long as you are not doing hurt or harm. Mm -hmm. You know, in medicine, they say above all, do no harm. <laughs> yeah, 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 I completely agree. Don't let one person be very uncomfortable with it or not. And that doesn't mean you don't do it, but discuss it well. Mm -hmm. But that each person will be, you'll be on the same page and do no harm. So that, then the other part I always look at, again, a misconception mm -hmm. is that some men feel macho when they say, I'm, I always ask for the sex and the wife doesn't. But it just shows a defect on their part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should be something that both man and woman enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the reasons why they don't is that the man just wants to satisfy himself than that. No, mm -hmm. they have to be first concentrating on the woman mm -hmm. when they are because the man's son is quick and little, mm -hmm. right? If the woman fully, if you dedicate your time, make sure the man fully enjoys herself. And that mm -hmm. measure you should have for a successful sex life. The mm -hmm. woman should also equally ask and want it. Mm -hmm. That just I'm macho, I'm always the one asking. No, that means you didn't do play your role mm -hmm. for the other person. Yeah. You should be both wanting it and asking for it. But it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So if basically if the what they say is if you if your wife is not asking you for sex, <laughs> there's something yes, on. Yes, <laughs> man, there's something going on. Go on, go on, go on, check. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say to that. <laughs> I'm, 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 going to, I'm going to push you on another question. So um, you know, recently I had approached you as a father about sex education for my young one. Remember when I you know, I did, yeah. you know and mm -hmm. And you gave some interesting words of encouragement. These are followed up on, you know. Is that something you see frequently where young Christian men are coming to act, are coming to find out how it's done or just talking to their young sons? Because like people were, were saying, I think it's if they don't hear it from one place, they'll hear it from another. Right. And it's only yeah. better to hear it from, yeah. from, from home, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And in the right sense. And in the right sense. Yeah. 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 Um, and, I mean, like I said, especially Christian, very naive. We don't know most yeah, of this. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't watch pornography and all those things, so you don't see all those. There are now books, even books written by, um, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. choral mm -hmm. and so on, graphic. Fine. I mean, if you reach out to that. But again, just because we shy away from these things, there is an age whereby you need to learn and know. And I'm amazed at how. From my experience, one, like you said, people don't know much about this, but even much worse is that parents, fathers are really shy in telling their kids about it. Mm. So they always tell me to mm. address mm. with their kids. The avenue they try to use is that, I mean, being a physician, there are times you do those discussions. But I'm yeah. Just, it's actually best not to just hear from me as a physician. Yeah. Yes, that's also an elder, I mean, elder because, you know, maybe go to the same church and so mm -hmm. it Really, the best person would have been the dad. Mm -hmm. And you get the information. And again, until we remove that veil mm -hmm. context as if it does, mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it come. You mm -hmm. need to let people know, talk to them about it. Because, like I said, if you don't talk to them about it, they will learn it elsewhere. If they don't learn it elsewhere, they will be amazed and confused when they get to puberty and some of these changes occur. Yeah. <laughs> and, what yeah. going. and these are things that we try to, like they say, just a little like an ostrich that say, tries to bury his head. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so it is out there, and we need to be more open discussing. Yeah. In your opinion, and a best time for a father to have this conversation with his kids? Yeah. Um, most times I discuss with them. Now, there are a couple of factors you need to consider too, because each child is different. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have at the, in quote, level of maturity and mm -hmm. 
consciousness. Some children are also very, uh, they lack adventure, inquisitive. So those ones, maybe before they try and find out themselves, you quickly let them know. <laughs> that way they, they, you know, so you have to have all those ideas of the different individuals, but best ages are between 10 and 12 years. Okay, we happen to have a precocious child, right? So you went uh, a bit early at nine, but it's interesting that he's asking you this because I remember him coming to me to say, ah, you didn't join us in the conversation. I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the daddy. <laughs> so have that conversation because I think it was, you know, as explicit as it could be. But what I was trying to tell him, which stems from this communication thing where, you know, we've been talking about, I said, you know, I think because this boy spend a lot of time with me, I don't shy away from talking about private parts, right? Like we, they ask me all kinds of questions and I will answer them. Like, I don't make it like, ooh, what are you asking? You know what I mean? Like, I will just, you know, give an answer. So we 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 call the parts by name. They, they are very, what's the word? Comfortable, I think, you know, with the uh, human anatomy as best as you can for that age. So, I I wasn't afraid like you know it would be like something big for him but I guess for um daddy it was interesting <laughs> to sit and have that conversation. Yes, sir. yeah, I I I think sometimes too and um uh, well so so I think it's both ways though. Yeah. Um, so for instance, families that I'm in touch with where there's no fatherly figure. Yeah. So, Others are scared that they don't know all these things, so they want me to help explain. Mm -hmm. but that may be a little understandable, although I, I mean, but the opposite is also true because sometimes uh, mothers can, in quote, take themselves off it and, yeah. explain, and explain it without any feelings. But why some men are afraid to explain it to their kids is, is personal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so at both sides have in quote excuses yeah. or reasons yeah. for those yeah. who do not make us not want to. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Next question has to do with the role of faith and religion. And I know that both of you are very active workers in the church and the vineyard. So my question is, does this impact your marriage in the sense of now you have greater responsibility to ensure that your relationship is a model, right, for the body? Um, the other part of that is, have there been times when those responsibilities, right, come into contention in the context of marriage, where you're like, I'm serving my father's house, so this marriage is, you know, secondary. How do you, how have you balanced those two things over the years? Yeah, that, that, that's a very important question. Um, so growing up as a believer, I had mm -hmm. always, I mean, I mean, that's how it should be, right? Your Christian life is not, is 24-7. Yeah, and I always knew that much more in the hidden places God is seeing you there, and therefore mm -hmm. your behavior should be upright, true, and yeah. not just that you think you're in church, like yeah. play um roles in church as leaders in the church and so on, and therefore we need to do something more religious. Mm -hmm. So my thought had always been: look, you are a believer all around, so just. Yeah. In that your true natural self for uh, uh, and let it flow. In fact, sometimes I always oh, I'm overconscious out there and thinking, hey, if I do some of the good things I do to my wife, I hope people won't look at it as <laughs> if I do thank you. And I think that initially made me to act less instead of acting yeah. less. And then, I, you know, God ministered to me at the time. Uh, if you remember that story when Jesus was. Um, blessing, I think, the bread and the fish and so on. He said, Father, I thank you that you hear me and so on. He said, I'm saying this not because I don't know mm -hmm. you, so, but I'm saying mm -hmm. it so that those around we know and hear that you hear me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he purposely did some things for people to see it. So mm -hmm. I, I saw that, no, not just, look, people need to see how true relationship yeah. is. And they yeah. were intentionally demonstrated 
because mm -hmm. people that just played silently with themselves. Because, but then also that these people may know. So I now more and more now say, no, no, let me not be shy in demonstrating and showing it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, but people are actually looking for role models to follow too. So when they see, so I've more intentionally, uh, um, you know, done that. And then when it comes to kind of like, have we ever had to, you know, like compensate and so on, being busy? Mm -hmm. We always have this principle and knowledge that the most important thing is your salvation. Mm -hmm. Nothing should take away your salvation. But next to that is your family. Mm -hmm. Family is second. Third is ministry. Mm -hmm. That is the order. Now, mm -hmm. we are very busy in church. Nothing, however, talking about busy, and I'm not talking about busy in church, your ministry. Yeah, with God cannot supersede your family. Mm. Uh, based on that, therefore, I will never do anything that will be detrimental to my family setup because how? Mm. Uh, mm. However, thank God we both love God. Yeah, and we do know that doesn't mean that the family is not in a position already to make sacrifices. Yeah. Or making sacrifices that is acceptable. So yeah. if that sacrifice reaches a level that now is no longer tolerated, it will be different. Mm. You have to stop it. Mm. So we have learned, and we've never really had that problem. Yeah. So, so love serving God, I love it. So yeah. we all have ways, and I've known that though family is second, but we can sacrifice and compromise. So she's in the choir. Sometimes, many times, choir meets much earlier before church starts. Yeah. We, together as family we have go together without be doing other things or even just watch her mm -hmm. um, after church i may have some teachings and so on to do she's mm -hmm. ready to yes. and make those sacrifices but that knowledge of the order mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's always there so if i can come in here i want to say that it's also actually an essential part of the success of any relationship or of any of any home you know kind of I guess you could say supporting mm -hmm. your desires or your um, side business or side yeah. hustle. If I can, not that uh, Christian faith is a side hustle, but just kind of. Yeah. It's so important that, I mean, if you're going to summarize a word for our home, our family is going to be we're very intentional. Okay. So I'm very intentional about supporting Bio in his ministry. Mm. or his service to church as much as he's also invested in supporting me you know and then kind of also understanding your you know your relationship with the spouse that you have so by like you said he's always you know love god always serve them by is kind of person that if he has a deadline and i had to learn that you know and understand that you know and kind of like you said compromise with joy if you know if i can use your word from your last um yeah. death, where where if I has a deadline, you know, has something to do, maybe and he has six hours. If I has church, logic will tell you, common sense will tell you, this church, a big and <laughs> bios logic. And I've known that about him. He's the way he he is is like, no, actually you should go to church for that reason because if you go to church for three hours, remain that three hours there because you serve God, God will help that will. Mm -hmm. In 30 minutes. That you know, you know, so at first I'd be like, Are you crazy? You know, what's wrong with you? But as I got to realize that this was a very important thing for me, yeah. you know, I I support. Mm -hmm. And so even when I'm like in my mind, I'm like, bros, you're supposed to be doing the work, but I know that that's you know, that's how. He will mm -hmm. be able to now focus on the deadline, you know. And so I support. So I don't go like, what is wrong with you? You are going to church. Go to your deadline. I'm like, okay, it's fine. You know, so it's, I mean, and it's an intentional effort. It's an intentional, so it's, like, it's like I'm supporting mm -hmm. his goal or his passion. And it's important in our, in our relationship. Same mm -hmm. thing I said, so many examples. I mean, I mean, or if I have fire practice or we have to do something. And they have to help out with the kids, or the kids have to go, you know. But I have to. I have, we have a special program, and I have to go early. He will gladly 
take over that job or that responsibility that I was supposed to do because I have church. And it's vice versa. And, you know, I think it's an intentional role of supporting each other in our ministry. And that just kind of just helps us to go like, it doesn't have to come, service starts at 11 and I have to be in church at 9.30. He doesn't have to come with me. We have two cars. Well, he will, and he may not have anything to do, you know, but it's just that part of, and I feel supported and he helps me yeah. to thrive even as well in my ministry as well. So it's definitely something that we do intentionally to support, you know, and it definitely has helped our marriage, it's helped our relationship in leaps and bounds. Amen. Mr. Stanley has to get to church at 5.30. I'm not supporting him on that one. 5.30. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, you just have to know what works for you, right? I mean, you know, that's what you should do for bed, right? I'm sorry. Ha. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I said, even if that ministry was my desire, I'm like, mm, no, let's think about something else. <laughs> but I like that. It's uh, family. And yeah. Then yeah. ministry. I, love it. I was just telling them that their trust bank is full. And how, mm -hmm. how do you, I mean, there's such a high level of trust. So even if somebody says something offensive, it will not register the way another, you know. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know Isn't and that so? What time is the problem is about clashes, but their trust bank is just full. Yeah. I'll tell you something. And that's the. Uh, I think that's that thing of you know loving somebody, right? That that your your actions and your words have shown that you love the person, and the person feels and accepts the love, right? Because you know there are people that you love, but they they are not capable yet of accepting you know the fullness of that love, so to speak, which everyone has to do their own work. So it, it's um yeah, I think it's that idea of. She's seen that, you know, this person loves her. And she said, they are not trying not to hurt me intentionally and vice versa. And so because of that, you can rest secure. Right? Remember what we were saying? I don't know who it was. I think it was two sessions ago where we were saying that uh, affirmation, right? Words of affirmation is not just speaking it out. Like you have to create that sense of safety, you know, for the person. And uh, safety is trust. Right. If you're safe, you can trust. Yeah. So I think we've definitely gotten there with time. Mm -hmm. Um, I can say that uh, you know, you know, as they say, when you when you know better, you do better, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as we know better, you know, like those things that has helped us, you know, the foundation of our homes, like the things that we said, he's not going to intentionally hurt me, and he believes that the same way. So it makes it easy to forgive mm -hmm. and it makes it easy to compromise with job mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. um because mm -hmm. you know that like you said and it's honestly i want to please him and honestly he wants to please me so when both of you are working towards a goal of pleasing mm -hmm. him, and your know, that goal is is sincere. I mean, it's really going to be hard to to find a lot of um, things to be upset with. And it doesn't mean I don't get upset with him. Yeah, it, we talk about it, and you know, with the goal of okay, I want to please brotherly, you know, you know, or he says something like, okay, my goal is I want to please by you know, and that has also helped us not to allow external mm -hmm. opinions. Mm -hmm. That has really helped us not to allow external opinions or external thoughts or what people think about how we should be doing something. Yep. You know, so yep. it has helped us to propone ourselves into, you know, so if this thing is going to please me and he knows it's going to please me, he doesn't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. And I mean anybody. And so maybe um, the kids do something and I'm very upset and I yell, you know, he's not going to say, you know, in front of the kids, he's going to support me right there and then. Now we may go into the room and he may say, Auntie, I'm done. 
know, how's <laughs> a little too hard. <laughs> you can, you may, you could have handled it differently, you know. Yeah. Also with yeah. wisdom, because I'm still very upset that I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you, calm down. <laughs> but, you know, and, you know, I may listen, I'm like, okay. So, and at that time, both of us will not agree to say, okay, should we take back the punishment or mm-hmm. should we just let this ride and then just use it as a learning point for next time?